Hi, Michelle Glass here, and we are still looking at the organelles. So we are looking at another uh, episode of our Chapter 4, Lecture 4 series. So our topic for this video are the energy organelles, and we will see that there are two energy organelles for us to talk about. We have the mitochondria, which we will see present in all eukaryotic cells. Mitochondria is the plural form of the word. Mitochondrion, R-I-O-N ending, is singular version. Uh, so that is the difference if you see those two terms. In the case of our chloroplasts, we see this is another important energy organelle, but we will only see this one found in cells that are photosynthetic, so our producers. So we'll see this in plants, especially, but also in some of our protists. Uh, green algaes are going to contain chloroplasts in their cells in order to do photosynthesis. Our mitochondrion, so here I've listed it in the singular version, is where the process of aerobic respiration occurs. This process is important because it produces the bulk of the ATP that the cell needs. So about 95% of ATP production is happening here. Remember, ATP stands for our energy molecule, adenosine triphosphate. We'll be talking about this process of aerobic respiration. It will have its entire own separate chapter, so we'll go into a lot of detail with that. And then we also see that the mitochondrions, uh, the mitochondria have their own DNA molecule and their own ribosomes. So this is interesting um, because it's starting to look like a prokaryotic cell inside of a eukaryotic cell. Mitochondria we find in both animal and plant cells. So keep that in mind. So we see this in all of our eukaryotic cells. Our focus this semester is on plants and animal cells, and we will see them in both. The mitochondria structure we'll look at here, and we'll look at it again in the future. So you have two membranes. You have an outer membrane and an inner membrane. And look at how much folding you have on that inner membrane. There's a space in between the two membranes, which is called the intermembrane space, where inter means between. And then all of those, uh, all of that inside of that inner membrane is called the mitochondrial matrix. And we see that the matrix is what consists of the DNA, the ribosomes, and all of the enzymes necessary for aerobic respiration. All of these folds of that inner membrane we see, these are called cristae, that's the plural form, so crista would be singular. And the purpose of this folding is to increase surface area. The chloroplast is our other important energy organelle. And remember, we'll see this in photosynthetic cells. So we will see that in our plant cells and then in algae, which would be a photosynthetic protist. The process of photosynthesis, we have a chapter dedicated to this topic as well, but essentially we're taking solar energy and converting that into uh, sugar molecules. Those sugar molecules then are going to be used by our plant cell to make ATP. When we look at our chloroplast structure, we see that there are two membranes here as well. So we again have that same uh, kind of idea of an outer membrane, an intermembrane space and then an inner membrane. There's fluid in the inner membrane, which is called the stroma, and it also contains DNA and ribosomes and enzymes. So we're seeing a pattern here that's very similar to what we had with our mitochondria. You have these membranous disks called thylakoids in your uh, stroma. The thylakoids are the membranous discs that contain the pigment chlorophyll, which is involved in photosynthesis. And that's what's actually gonna make the plants green. All of the stacks of the thylakoids together are called grana. That would be the plural form. One stack, as I've labeled here, is granum. That would be the singular form. 
Remember that our plant cells have both chloroplasts and mitochondria. So when we say that the cell is um, using sunlight to make sugar, then we will see that that sugar goes to the mitochondria for that process of um, aerobic respiration, which is how we're making our ATP molecules. So that process is the same whether it's a plant or an animal cell. Now we have mentioned in our discussion that both the mitochondria and the chloroplast contain DNA and contain ribosomes. And we've talked about these are um, found universally in all cell types. And so it's interesting that these organelles have their own DNA and their own ribosome that's separate from the rest of the cell. And when you look at the DNA of the mitochondria and the chloroplast is circular, and this looks very much like the chromosome that is found in our prokaryotic cells. And when we look at the ribosomes in the mitochondria and the chloroplast, the size and structure of these ribosomes look more like prokaryotic ribosomes than eukaryotic ribosomes. And so this information taken together makes it uh, look like these used to be free-living prokaryotic cells, and that's what um, has been described as the endosymbiont theory, that the mitochondria and the chloroplast were once uh, free-living prokaryotic cells. They developed a symbiotic relationship with larger cells and became incorporated. So in a symbiotic relationship, both, both organisms are benefiting. So in this case, the former free-living mitochondria is benefiting by um, living inside of another cell. Over time, um, they merged into a single organism such that the mitochondria and the chloroplasts are no longer able to live independently, and now they are just full organelles, um, but they have just retained their own prokaryotic um, style DNA and their own prokaryotic style ribosomes, but they're, they're functioning as organelles inside of eukaryotic cells. Okay, and that's it for now.